Hello, and welcome to Paranormal Law. There are multiple sightings and cases of paranormal incidences throughout history and more so today. But with this topic, we're going to look at how the legal system views cryptids, ghosts, and others in respect to the law. Salem Witch Trials This topic isn't going to be a deep history of what all happened during the events as I have made a separate video covering this topic previously. However, when we talk about paranormal and the law, this has to be the first thought that comes to one's mind. A brief overview is that during 1692 to 1693, 20 people were accused of being witches and executed by various means in Massachusetts. At this point, I should note that contrary to thought, none of them were actually burned at the stake, as movies would have you believe. Most were hung or endured inhuman torture practices. So with this event, many areas around Salem, again, where media ad-libs history, claiming it was only in Salem, held trials in court for the suspected witches, complete with judges, lawyers, a form of jury, and witnesses. However, a group of girls that contrived a plan to gain attention frequently were the evidence for the use of witchcraft when they started to fake spasms and talk gibberish. While by theory the trials were a court set up, the actual practices of law were far from just. Hearsay, fake witnesses, and cruel tests were all accepted when it came to the accused trial. For the most part, if one was suspected of being a witch, their fate was already sealed, and the trial was the biggest hoax of the whole terrible event. Now I could stop here, but I do feel it important to mention that when the Bill of Rights was ratified on December 15, 1791, it made the persecution of one's religion illegal with the First Amendment in a way preventing such an event from happening again in the United States. I'm sad to point out that a very similar event did take place in the early 2000s where thousands of women were accused of witchcraft, tortured, and executed in India. Some of the tests used to prove innocence was to drink poison, and if they lived, they were a witch. This is very similar to some of the tests used during the Salem Witch Trials, and it's really sad that it still happens to this day. Jinn. In a previous video that I made not long ago, I discussed what a jinn is, but to quickly recap, it is a being that lives in both our plane of existence and the spirit worlds. For the most part, they are very powerful and can be both helpful or problematic for people who have encountered them. They are primarily found in Islamic texts, but also have been featured in a few mainstream movies. In researching the topic a while back, I found that a few Islamic households claimed to have jinn living in their houses and seemed to almost be passed on from generation to generation. Sometimes this guest isn't as welcome as others may perceive them to be, as the following strange story explains. In 2009, a family living in western Saudi Arabia, near Medina, took an extreme course of action when they filed a lawsuit with their courts against the jinn that resided in their home. According to the suit, the family had lived at their home for 15 years, but suddenly started to feel the presence of a jinn. They claimed that this being would make strange noises and leave threatening messages on their cell phones, instructing the family to leave their house. At night, they claimed the spirit would pelt them with stones, and on multiple occasions their cell phones would just disappear. The courts ruled they would look into the truthfulness of the case and act accordingly. Outside of any normal explanation with this case, it still stands that the family did sue a spirit in court. I guess it is true. No one is safe from being sued anymore. Bigfoot I know you may be thinking, but Ben, you refuse to do videos about Bigfoot. Yes, that is true, but this topic isn't delving into the cryptid's history as it is more of an interesting turn in legal events. In the United States alone, there have been almost 4,000 Bigfoot sightings within the past 95 years, and this doesn't even include those that go unreported or the total amount when considering the entire world. Not only this, but there is quite a few Native American cave paintings and lore that support the existence of a Sasquatch. With all these modern day sightings, very little released evidence has been found to support the existence of a hairy humanoid creature living in the wild. Just so it is clear, I do believe that Bigfoot can exist. 
What makes this all interesting is the fact that many states, including New York and Pennsylvania, have laws that make it illegal to hunt or kill a Bigfoot. Well, by theory, these states don't outright say Bigfoot. They have gone on record stating that should one exist, they don't have an open season, so killing one would be illegal. However, Washington State has taken it a step further with the Undiscovered Species Protection Act. In Skamania County, it is considered a felony to shoot one, and it will result in a fine of up to $100,000 and up to 10 years in prison. The fine and body will be donated to a state college for examination, and efforts will be made to protect a newly found species from further hunting. This law was put into place in 1969, and it was further added on to in 1984. You may ask, what was added in 1984? If the coroner examining the body finds it to be humanoid, the person who shot it will immediately face homicide charges. To further this, on June 9, 1991, Whatcom County in Washington was also declared a Sasquatch Protection and Refuge Area. While researching this topic, I also found some very interesting signs that you can visit along the roadways to Pikes Peak in Colorado. The signs are of Bigfoot crossings and are there to inform travelers that a Bigfoot looking creature has been spotted in the area so drivers should be aware. This is quite a bit of protection for something that many think doesn't exist. Greenbrier Ghost Here is a rather interesting story in which a ghost couldn't let her death go unpunished. In Greenbrier County, West Virginia, Alva Zona Heaster married a man named Erasmus Stribling Trout Shoe on October 20th, 1896. Erasmus would later change his name to Edward, but most people knew the blacksmith by the name Trout. What many didn't know was that Trout had been married twice before, with his first marriage ending in divorce and his second dying strangely after only a year of being together. By most accounts, the Shoes were happy for the little time they had together, but on January 23, 1897, a neighbor boy found Zona's limp body at the foot of the stairs in the Shoe home. The boy ran to get a doctor, but when they returned, Edward had already moved the body upstairs and dressed it in clothes with a high collar ready for the funeral. The doctor was unable to give a thorough examination since Edward kept saying it would be too hard on him. The death was ruled due to childbirth, even though no records exist saying Zona was pregnant. Mary Jane Heaster, Zona's mother, didn't buy the natural cause of death and felt her daughter had been murdered. After the funeral, she was washing a cloth from the casket and the water turned red, indicating blood was on it. That night, she claimed that Zona's ghost came to her and described in detail how she was murdered and said it was done by her husband Edward. Armed with this information, she pressured prosecutor John Preston to exhume the body. At first he refused, but Edward's strange behavior at the funeral, refusing anybody to look at the body, along with the doctor not doing a proper investigation, led John to allow the body to be unearthed. This time it was found that Zona's neck had been broken, her windpipe crushed, and large cuts were found on her neck. Edward was tried in court and convicted of killing his wife. He might have gotten away with murder if it hadn't been for his wife's ghost coming back. I should note that the evidence in the form of the ghost visitation was originally planned to be excluded in the trial, but Edward's lawyers brought it up in an attempt to discredit Mary's mental stability, but it actually resulted in the jury being more swayed towards believing what Mary had to say. Ghostbusters Ruling Many people buy a house hoping to make it their home with no thoughts of the previous residents. In fact, the thought of a previous murder or even their house being haunted is terrifying to most individuals. There are some who purposely buy houses that are known to be haunted, though. With this story, the latter was the case, and brought up quite an interesting ruling in New York history. Helen Ackley owned a house in Nyack, New York, that her and her family acknowledged was haunted by multiple poltergeists. Helen herself reported many instances of strange noises, things being moved, apparitions, and even beds being shaken by the spirits to the publication Reader's Digest. Around 1990, a man by the name of Jeffrey Stambovsky agreed to buy the house for $650,000, of which he put down a payment of $32,000 on the purchase of the home. 
Jeffrey was not from the area and claims to have not been aware of any of the ghost stories involved with the property. And this is where the problem came in. After learning the property's history, Mr. Stambovsky sued Miss Ackley since she didn't disclose to him that the house was haunted. In a turn of events, the court ruled that a seller or realtor isn't required to tell a buyer if the property has had a murder or is haunted unless they are specifically asked. Stranger still, the court officially ruled the house as being haunted, being as how it was reported as such to both national and local press. They further stated that regardless of if the house is actually haunted, it is widely reported to be so, so the value would be affected. The case was given the moniker the Ghostbusters ruling due to the nature of the proceedings, as well as the many references to the movie were used by the justices in the case. It should be noted that other states have followed suit, such as Massachusetts. On their website, under Massachusetts General Law, Title 15, Chapter 93, Section 114, it states in a nutshell, the houses of supernatural activity do not need to be disclosed by the seller unless asked by the buyer. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!